Pornography, a biblical perspective. Now, I know as soon as I say the word pornography, people become uncomfortable. They become nervous. They probably shift in their seats and clear their throats. I understand. I did this study because I believe that the religious community is experiencing a pandemic. The disease which is causing this pandemic is not COVID-19. It is called pornography. Pornography is a very taboo subject in religion. Just about every adult in the religious community knows what pornography is and has probably dealt with it in their lives. Yet, it is something that very few of us are willing to talk about openly in public spaces. Why is it that people are falling victim to pornography, but hardly anyone will say anything about it? It is because people are embarrassed by it. People are so embarrassed to admit that they have an addiction to pornography because they are so fearful about what others might think about them. If people confess that they are struggling with pornography, they might think in their own mind, uh, will my girlfriend or boyfriend break up with me? Will my husband or wife be angry and frustrated at me? Will the brothers and sisters at my meeting be disappointed with me? Will the young people at my gathering who look up to me no longer consider me a role model in my community? All of these concerns are very real. These concerns are so important to religious people that they would rather be silent. They would rather isolate themselves. They would rather keep these things a secret because of how afraid they are of the social consequences that this level of honesty can have on their life. The precious paradise that they created for themselves will appear to have been destroyed after all the hard work that they put in to build it up. So what say you? Should people continue in this way of secrecy and pray that God helps them to overcome a struggle with pornography, even if they can't be honest enough to ask their brothers and sisters for help? If they cannot even be honest with others that they are struggling with pornography, well, what should they do? Ephesians chapter 5 verse 11, reading from the NIV, it says, Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. When people watch pornography, they do not watch it in the light. They do not watch it in the presence of others, usually. They usually watch it in the darkness, at night, in a dark room, where they think no one can see them. They do this because they want to get away with it. They do this because they do not want anyone to see them, to see what they are watching in the dark, nor do they want anyone to see what they are doing while they watch it. People would be so embarrassed if someone were to catch them in the act red-handed. But Paul exhorts people not to do this. Paul tells everyone that they should do nothing in the dark. They should not participate in the fruitless deeds of darkness. Instead, Paul tells everyone to expose the deeds of darkness and not to participate in them. No one should try to hide and isolate themselves enough to give privacy to watch pornography. Instead, people should expose pornography for what it really is. So, what is pornography exactly? According to the Bible, pornography is idolatry. Uh, reading from Colossians chapter 3, verse 5, from the King James Version, it says, Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Paul tells us that covetousness is idolatry. Now, the word covet means to desire something that is not yours to have. When people are watching pornography, they are wanting the things that they see on the screen, but they are not yours to have. This means that when people are watching pornography, they are coveting the people and things that they see on the screen. Therefore, since they are coveting, this means that watching pornography is idolatry. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 13, reading from the NIV says, the body is not meant for sexual immorality before the Lord. In other words, our bodies were not meant to be used for watching pornography, nor were our bodies meant to be used for participating in the deeds that accompany pornography. Our bodies were meant to be used in the service of our Heavenly Father. 
1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 15. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ himself? Shall I then take the members of Christ and unite them with a the prostitute? Never. We need to realize that the members of our bodies are just another way of saying body parts. So, the apostle is asking us, should we take our body parts and unite them with a prostitute? Now, you might think that you are safe if you have not committed fornication with a prostitute, but you would be wrong, because this verse goes far beyond the realm of physical fornication. It addresses the issue of virtual fornication as well. People who participate in pornography are prostitutes on the screen. So if you watch pornography, you are joining yourself to a prostitute. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16, again from the NIV. Do you not know that he who unites himself with a prostitute is one with them in body? For it is said, the two shall become one flesh. If you watch pornography, you are becoming one in body with a prostitute. Now, it goes without saying that this is a very serious issue in the religious community. Many people are in relationships and are experiencing a conflict of interest. They want to be closer to the significant other that God has placed in their lives, but they are holding themselves back because they are joining themselves to prostitutes on a screen. This is a very serious issue and it should not be ignored, nor should this issue be kept a secret and swept under the rug. The two the porn viewer and the prostitute on the screen have become one flesh whenever you are watching pornography on the screen. First Corinthians chapter six, verse 18, again from the NIV says, flee from sexual immorality. In other words, run away from pornography as fast as you possibly can. Do not think that you are strong enough to be on the computer if you are feeling spiritually weak. Do not allow yourself to be alone in the dark when you are spiritually weak. Run away from the computer when you are feeling tempted. Do not allow yourself to continue to fall over and over and over again. Continuing 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18 from the NIV, it says, All other sins a person commits are outside the body, but whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. When people watch pornography, they are sinning against God. But if that wasn't serious enough, they are also sinning against their own body as well. Romans chapter 6 verse 12 Do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. If something reigns over you, it means that it is in charge of you. It is your master. It is your boss. It is your king. Pornography is such a powerful addiction that it can take over your life. It can make you go into what's called autopilot. When you are an autopilot, it is because you have allowed pornography to take you captive as if you were a prisoner of war. You have allowed pornography to become such a big problem in your life that you have less ability to say no and you are more likely to give in. Saying no to pornography is not easy if it is reigning in your life. Therefore, Paul tells us to not let pornography reign in our life. Romans chapter 6 verse 13 Again, from the NIV, do not offer any part of your body to sin as an instrument of wickedness. In other words, do not use your eyes to sin. Do not use your hands to sin. Do not use your mind to sin. Do not use any part of your body to sin. Continuing that verse, offer every part of yourself to him as an, as an instrument of righteousness. You should not be using your body parts or your intellect for pornography or for any other evil desire. You should be using your, using your entire body for righteousness. Use every part of your body to serve our Heavenly Father and not to serve King Pornography. Romans chapter 6, skipping down to verse 16 from the NIV. Don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone or something as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one you obey? 
If you allow your body parts to be used in the service of pornography, you are behaving as an obedient slave to your sinful flesh. Should we be obedient slaves to sinful flesh? Certainly not. But if you have become addicted to pornography, then you have allowed yourself to become an obedient slave to pornography. You have announced to your mind and to your body that pornography is your king and not Yahweh. You have announced to your mind and to your body that you will serve king pornography, which means that you are committing idolatry. Remember, Paul told us in Colossians chapter 3 verse 5 that covetousness is idolatry. Therefore, pornography is also idolatry. Pornography is not an easy king to depart from. It is a very strong and powerful king. In Romans chapter 6, going to verse 19 from the NIV, I am using an example from everyday life because of your human limitations. Paul recognizes that this is a common temptation for our religious community. Many religious followers all over the world suffer from this addiction. This is not something that is rare. You are not alone. There are brothers and sisters all over our religious community that are fighting for their lives to defeat king pornography. Paul himself must have struggled with some kind of immorality, as have so many people from every generation of mankind. Therefore, scripture presents so many warnings about it. God knows how dangerous pornography is for our religious community. Therefore, he gave us his holy word. God's holy word is here to help us. Paul had a very tough time dealing with his addiction to sin, whatever that sin was. And he gives us some insight into the mental battle that he had with sin so often in Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7 will help us to appreciate how difficult this struggle with king pornography really is. Romans chapter 7, uh, round about verses 14 to 25, talk about the struggle that Paul, Paul has. Paul tells us that he hates his, his addiction, whatever that addiction was. But he keeps going back to it, even though he does not want to go back to it. He talks about how the sin in him is waging war against the righteousness of God that he has learned from his word. All of us know what this struggle is like. I do not think that anyone in the religious community loves pornography. Most likely, they absolutely hate it, and they probably wish that there was some kind of switch somewhere, that if they could just flip the switch off, then the addiction would go away and they would not have to battle with it anymore. They watch it when they are bored because when they are bored, their minds are free to wander and free to think about ungodly things. They watch pornography when they are stressed because they have not developed healthy ways of dealing with stress. In other words, pornography has become some kind of a drug for people to rely on. Drug users, pornography addicts, alcoholics, and the like, they all know what it like what it is like to use things to help them to deal with stress, boredom, and weak times in their life. This is not only a very unhealthy practice, but it also has a negative impact on our walk to the promised land, and it has a negative impact on our relationship with others. People who are addicts become more isolated. They become angry. They become embarrassed and afraid. They even become self-centered and consumed by guilt, consumed by shame. None of these things bring glory and honor to our Heavenly Father. So, if you are addicted to pornography, what can you do about it? Does the Bible give us any practical advice to help people to overcome this addiction? Yes, the answer is yes. The Bible does give some great advice to help people deal with pornography. In Proverbs chapter 27, verse 17, reading from the NIV, it says, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. The advice that the Bible gives is for people to have what are called accountability partners. 
An accountability partner is someone that you can trust, someone that you can rely on. You will need to expose your struggles with your accountability partners, and also they should expose their struggles to you. When someone exposes their struggles to you, do not be judgmental towards them. I repeat, do not be judgmental towards them. If you are judgmental towards them, this is what you are doing. You are encouraging them to isolate themselves. You are encouraging them to live their life of sin in secret. You are encouraging them to live in darkness and not to live in the light. This is not what should happen according to Ephesians chapter 5 verse 11, which exhorts us to expose the fruitless works of darkness or the fruitless deeds of darkness. Exposing your struggles will take a lot of bravery and it will take a lot of courage. This should not be underestimated. Of course, you care about what others think about you. You want others to have a positive outlook on you. You don't want others to know that you are struggling because you don't want to disappoint them, nor do you want them to have negative thoughts about you. You are probably embarrassed and would rather keep this to yourself. The problem is, though, if you keep this to yourself, you are less likely to have the ability to overcome it. The only reliable way to overcome pornography is to expose yourself to your accountability partners so that you can live in the light and not live in the darkness. Do not live a secret life. Live your life in the light. The prophet Solomon tells us more about the benefits of having accountability partners in Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verses 8 through 12. Again from the NIV, Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 8. There was a man all alone. Now keep that in mind, he's alone. He had neither son nor brother. There was no end to his toil, yet his eyes were not content with his wealth. For whom am I toiling, he asks, and why am I depriving myself of enjoyment? This too is meaningless, a miserable business. Now, at first, it appears as if this has absolutely nothing to do with accountability partners. But if you look closer, you can see that it actually does. This verse is talking about a lonely man who is toiling to maintain wealth, but he has no loved ones to pass it on to. So he feels as if his work is somehow meaningless because he will die one day and that will be the end of all of it. There is this concept called social currency. Social currency is a term that describes how popular someone is. If you are well liked, if you are a role model, then you are said to have a lot of social currency. If no one likes you, if you are always alone and you're always isolated, then you are said to have very little social currency. So think about this man's wealth as social currency. This man is working very hard to increase and maintain his social currency or social status. He wants others to admire him and to like him. He does not want anyone to be disappointed with him and he works very hard on his external image. This man believes that all of this hard work is worthless after a while because eventually he will die and that will be the end of all of it. Okay, now put yourself in this situation. You have a struggle with addiction, whether it be pornography or any other addiction, but you still want to maintain your social currency. You are working very hard to maintain your outside image. You want others to like you, to look up to you. But when you are at home and all alone, you are struggling with addiction. To maintain your social currency, you want to hide your addiction so that no one will be disappointed with you. But you should realize that one day you will die or Christ will return and your social currency and your social status. Well, all of that will be meaningless. The only thing that would matter in that day is if you used your time on this planet to give all glory and honor to our Heavenly Father and to fight against King Pornography or King Sin. So Continuing uh, in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, but now we're going to read verses 9 through 12 again from the NIV. 
It reads, two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who fails and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. This shows the benefits of having accountability partners. If one falls, there is someone else there to pick you up. But, and here's the warning, woe to the man who falls and does not have an accountability partner. For, who will pick him up when he falls? If you are having a moment of weakness, you need someone there to encourage you so that you will make the right choice. And even if they aren't there physically, they need to be there and as in being available to you uh, whenever you are having weaknesses so that you can consult them and pray with them. And on the flip side, when you are strong, when you are feeling confident, you need to be available and approachable so that others can be encouraged by you. James chapter 5 verse 16, re reading from the NIV, Therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Do not live your lives in secret. Do not live your lives in isolation. Do not live secret lives in the dark. Expose the fruitless deeds of darkness. Confess your sins to your accountability partners and live your life in the light. And notice it says that you may be healed. Modern science has shown us that addictions, whatever addiction it is, are mental illnesses. Well, how do you overcome an illness? You need to be healed from that illness. So this verse in James is very appropriate for this conversation because we need healing from the illness that is pornography addiction or whatever addiction it is. It needs to healing needs to take place and it takes place because of the prayer of righteous people. James chapter 4 verse 7 from the NIV, resist the devil and he will flee from you. If you and your accountability partners work together, over time you can eventually build up a resistance to pornography. Now, do not think for yourself, and this is a big disclaimer, do not think for one second that you are going to totally eliminate pornography from your life forever. This is not going to happen until Christ returns. But what you can do in the meantime is you can make the temptation flee from you maybe for an hour or for a day or for a week or for a month or for a year. The longer you resist, the more you will begin to develop a resistance to it. But you need help from your accountability partners to do this. Luke chapter 11 verses 24 to 26 uh, from the NIV. It reads, when an impure spirit comes out of a person, it goes through arid places seeking rest and does not find it. Then it says, well, I will return to the house I left. When it arrives, it, find, it finds the house swept clean and put in order. Then it goes and takes seven other spirits more wicked than itself, and they go in and live there. And the final condition of that person is worse than the first. This parable that Christ gave can be a, applied to someone who is battling with pornography. They might go cold turkey for a while and tell themselves, that they're never going to watch pornography again as they slam their fists on the table. And of course, maybe they'll go cold turkey for a while and they'll be successful. But the problem is, is that they did not fill their house or fill, fill their time or fill their life with something healthier, with something better. Now, since the house is empty, as you're going cold turkey, the pornography will come back to this house eventually. And it is going to find that this house is swept clean and empty. King pornography will come back to this house with other bad habits and you will be even worse than you were before.
So, the lesson is to stop watching pornography, but also to fill your life with better, healthier habits. Fill your life with good things, whether it be reading, whether it be calling a friend or a family member, maybe it's praying with someone, maybe it's doing the Bible readings with someone, maybe it's hanging out with friends or family, maybe it's playing a sport, your favorite sport, maybe it's doing some arts and crafts or writing a song, doing something creative. Whatever it is, take the time that you would spend with king pornography and instead use that time for something that is better, something that is healthier, something that will be pleasing in the eyes of our Heavenly Father. You can do this. It is not impossible. Trust in God and develop a team of partners. They can help you and you can help them. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 16, again from the NIV. Though the righteous fall seven times, they rise again, but the wicked stumble when calamity strikes. Fighting pornography is not easy. It is very difficult, and you may slip up now and again. But if you do slip up, do not beat yourself up too much. Everyone slips up sometimes, but the righteous will always get back up and try to do the right thing. The righteous never quit. The righteous never throw in the towel. You can do this. If you fall, get back up again. Get encouragement from your partners and pray with them for strength to continue in the fight against King Sin. Mm-hmm.